Welcome to Watercolor 42. Uh, this afternoon I'm going to be doing uh, something a little bit different as far as subject. Um, normally I tell everybody that I don't get involved too much with doing portraits because I do little caricatures and things like that, uh, thumbprints, you know, things. Uh, but uh, I don't get too much into portraits because uh, I think that's a, almost a specialty, you know, if you try to get it to look right and to, to make the person look good. And uh, so, but I, I, I'm going to show you today uh, just a, a general um, way of getting the uh, proportions of the head down. I made up these little um, little cutouts. And you, you know yourself that everybody refers to the shape of the head as an egg. Egg head, egg shape, right? So sometimes uh, uh, you can get some of these little uh, uh, plastic, you know, eggs around Easter time, and uh, you can use those as a reference to remind yourself, I guess. But anyways, uh, uh, this is how I do it. I cut out uh, a piece of uh, cardboard, like an egg shape, and then what I do is arrange it on the paper. Now. Um, I'm just going to sketch around this uh, today with the, uh, the the marker, but normally I would do this with a, a pencil so that uh, I, I don't want the pencil marks to show through. But I'm just going to do this just to show you how this works. Now you got the oval shape, so I'm just going to trace around here. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, um, just kind of... Like I said, if I do it with a pencil, I'm not worrying about the pencil marks because I can erase them. Today I'm using a permanent marker, but sort of on the lighter side. But see, this gives you the um, pretty much the uh, shape of the head. Let's fill this in a little bit here around the chin. And uh, if you're doing a, uh, uh, a male, the neck is always wider. And then for a lady, this I'm going to do a lady today. You can. Uh, I'm going to just do a lady's face today, but if it's a, a woman, usually the neck is not as wide. So let's put a line down here and a little notch over here. This is just for the idea of getting the the shoulders in. Now um, this is what I do. You can make these up easy enough. You start out, you cut out an oval shape, and then what I do after I cut it out, I fold that in half. And that gives me, this will give me my center line. Uh, if I need a guideline where the center of the face is, see how I, I'm doing it with pencil lighter. Then if you, if you want to put the eye line in, fold it this way. Fold it uh, horizontally. And then place this down around where the chin would be. And put a couple of marks here. And that would be your uh, eye line. Now the eye line is halfway, and th that's where people make the biggest mistake all the time, because you know you're looking at the hairline, and they think the eyes should be higher. So what happens? They don't put the uh, eyes in halfway between the top of the head and the chin, halfway. So this is as this is a good reminder. Uh, Here's the egg, fold the egg in half, halfway across. Now, I'm going to take this and fold it back again. I'm folding the chin up to the eye line. Fold the chin up to the eye line. And then, um, uh, let's put the, uh, the base of, this is going to be for the base of the nose. Let's put the pattern back on here, get it straight. And I'm just going to put a mark right here for the, that's for the base of the nose. Now, uh, as far, the, far, the, far as the mouth goes, between the, the nose, the base of the nose and the chin, that's a little bit not quite half and half. Uh, if anything, I think the, uh, the mouth is a little bit higher above, uh, above towards the no, uh, base of the nose than it is uh, to the chin. So having said that, I'm going to fold this back up a little bit, adjust the fold. And I think the mouth is going to be about in there, okay? So now, 
I put some marks also here. Uh, the ears, the ears are between the eye line and the base of the nose. So to make uh, the ears a lot of times, I think it's easier just to make sort of like a, sort of like a elongated oval. Uh, try to match one, <laughs> try to match one side with the other, so you don't have one ear a little bit too, too large. Compare it to the other side, but sat at the top of the the eye line, and come down to where the nose is. So it's so, sort of like a cup handle, you know. It, he is like a handle on a coffee cup. So now, the lines that I put in, I'm going to go over them darker. Let's make the ears come down here. Let's kind of repeat this one as close as I can. There you go. Not bad. Now, if you want to structure a little bit your drawing, um, usually the measurements, I, I usually do it this way. The width of an eye is the space between the eyes. In other words, you don't have one eye going this way and another one too close to the center of where the nose is. So let's put just a line here, just something like that. Then you've got the spacing about the same width of that uh, line and to the other eye over here. So there's the eye. Now, as far as the nose structure goes, I usually make it like a, a triangle. Here's the center, right? So bring this angle down here, just a light line, another one on this side. Try to get, you know, get it kind of symmetrical to a degree. And then I put a, a block here, and a little block here, one on this side for the nostril and another one for the opposite side. So it looks like you've got now a blocked nose, but, uh, let me just go over this a little bit more uh, with the marker. I'm going to make this a little darker in here. Now, some of these lines are going to be very soft. You can, when you, when you paint or something, put those in. And you don't have to make it, like, um, too, too rigid. Uh, if I made a little block for the nose, just round that little block off for the nostril. See, I just shaped it that way. Now, um, for the mouth, the mouth gets a little bit tricky. For women, uh, usually the upper lip is thinner, very thin here, and then the lower lip is a little bit thinner there. And then now, coming back up here, sometimes I use a, um, a, um, one of these little uh, flexi temp uh, geometric templates and uh, find a uh, circle these circles tend to be a little bit too large, but I'll just draw them freehand. You can use a dime or anything, a nickel, just to make a circle. One there. I'm just doing it freehand. And the other one over there. There's your eye. And then you have the top of the eye. Eyelid comes across here, over here. A um, little bit underneath here. A little bit over here, just to, you know, close around the eye. Now, um, depending on how you want to do the hair, the hairstyle <laughs> you get right now, I have a bald, bald head here, a little egg shape. And so the hairline can be like for a woman, let's, let's kind of do, give her a little swoop here, maybe come down in back of the ear. Hair, you can make the hair here line is as long as you want. Come over here and repeat one, two, three on this side. Kind of symmetrical. It doesn't have to be perfect, you know, when you brush your hair and so forth. Uh, it's going to be a little bit uh, off a bit. Now, um, you can add a little bit more detail to the ear if you want. Put some of the shapes inside, you know, what, what the ear might look like. And, um, I usually uh, do a lot more with the, the hair, you know, bring the hair out, uh, kind of make it wavy up through here. Uh, then the chin, then you've got the, uh, the neck, make sure the neck, the ladies uh, have th nice thin necks, and us guys, thicker necks. How about football players and wrestlers? You can't hardly see the necks because they're so muscle, you know, built up. Here's a, like something like that. 
So you get something like this. You can put a little bit more detail in the eye and so forth. So, and, and eyelashes. You can add some eyelashes up here. One, two, three. One, two, three. You can add as many as you'd like. And of course, with the ladies, the eyebrows. You don't want heavy eyebrows. Men have a heavier, heavier eyebrow. But the ladies have a nice, soft eyebrow. There you go. Now you can reshape this, go over this a little bit more, and uh, get, the, get the shape of the face in. Now, basically, basically, uh, maybe round this off in the nose. Okay. Um, basically, this is how you can get the proportions in. Now, after a while, you could probably not have to use my little gimmicky thing, but it's very helpful. And what's the most helpful thing about doing this is that make sure that the eye line is halfway between the top of the head and the chin. Everything else is relative and lines up um, from the eye line down, the base of the nose, the mouth, and so forth. So this gives you a pretty good uh, uh, drawing for a typical uh, proportioned head. Now. You got to get the proportions right, pretty much, and then when you do a portrait and try to get the likeness of that person, then you have to get real fussy about you know where the hairline is, uh, the shape of the nose and the ears and so forth, uh, the mouth. Then you have to get fussier into uh, the, uh, the the details to make the uh, the, the, the picture. Will, similar to, to, to the likeness of the person. I made another one of these little things. You, for a man's head, I think the man's head's a little bit um, blockier, maybe a little wider face, maybe a little bit more of a, you know, sort of a heavier chin and so forth. But for a woman, they're more tapered down, more tapered down. But these are good to refer to, these little um, helpful uh, helpers. A lot of times when I do pictures, um, uh, like if, if you're doing something uh, quick, sometimes what I do is uh, I do something like this. I, make, I, I can do this with a pencil. Make, make this shape here. I, I get the, uh, and if you want to do a side view, you've got the forehead that's round. You're going to bring out the shape of the nose where that goes. And you're still going to follow those lines halfway with the eyes, uh, halfway for the base of the nose, and the mouth halfway. So basically, when you do this, you're, you're lining everything up uh, with the proportions that you had for the front view. Here's the mouth in here. Here's, uh, here's going to be um, the uh, base of the chin. Usually women don't have a protruding chin. And then the eye, again, the eye is going to be in here somewhere. It sits back here and uh, so forth. I'll go over this a little bit heavier. The ears, they still are going to line up between the uh, eye line and the, uh, the uh, base of the nose. So when you, when you do this, I'm just going to go over this heavier so you can see it a, uh, a little bit better. It's going to look like this. Okay, when you're looking at the eye from the side, it's more of an oval, elongated oval. Uh, you got your eyebrows in here, you got your eye, a few eyelashes, you won't see too many, but they're in there somewhere. Then you got the mouth, so you're going to put that in there. And the ear. Now, sometimes if you don't want to show too much of the ear, I just put the hair. Uh, coming in again, you got that uh, a slim neck. Uh, the neck is summer, okay. And then the hair, like I said, you can have that kind of flow around here uh, and come out, swing out around here, kind of bump it up a bit. And so that gives you sort of a, uh, the profile, a side view. And after a while, if you do so many of those, I did it kind of slow mechanically today, but you could kind of whip those out pretty fast, okay? Uh, the uh, front view, though, is a little bit trickier because you've got to get uh, things some more, a little bit more symmetrical. 
than you would, normally would. Now, um, today I'm also going to talk about where the light comes from. Now, a lot of times when we do a picture, I, I usually sketch very light with a pencil when I draw, but you've got to know, uh, remind yourself which side the light's coming from. Sometimes you put a little couple of arrows just to remind myself. So what you're going to have is you're going to have one side of the face, for the most part, that will have um, pretty, pretty much a direct light on it. Then, then the other half of the face is going to be in the shadow. So let's say the light's coming from uh, left to right. So in this case, the, um, the left side of the head, I'm just doing this in pencil, that's all going to be shaded down in here. The, the ear and so forth. All this side of the head is going to be shaded down and even underneath the, uh, the chin. Now, a lot of times when I was younger, I used to make <laughs> the shadow under the chin a little bit too dark. I came in too heavy. And what happened, I was giving all the ladies and, and, and so forth a beard. So <laughs> when you do the shadow, that's going to be very light. And have that shadow also curved the curvature of the chin, okay? Follow, uh, follow the form, shape, okay? So all, that's what that's going to be like. Now, um, there's going to be little shadows, soft shadows around the uh, nose a little bit. And another thing, uh, your eyes set in into the, you know, in, into your uh, 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 head, your skull, and so you, you sometimes will see some shadows, <coughs> excuse me, around the eye. Here you go, something like this. Got to have some shadows in there. But when you do shadows, you've got to remember you can't come in with uh, real hard lines. Everything has to be soft. So you can start if you want, uh, if you want to just loosen up a little bit. Sometimes you can start by putting a little wash for the background. Uh, or you can just start right in with the face, well, whichever, you, whichever is easier for you. Actually, I can start in. Now, what gets tricky a lot of times is, is finding the colors that might uh, be more of the flesh tones. And if you kind of look at your own hands, like I've got sort of pinkish hands, and I can see all sorts of things <laughs> as far as color veins and so forth that you have. But uh, uh, usually you're safe if you start off with a little bit of a, a soft wash um, with uh, maybe some uh, yellow. Let's take a, a big brush. And uh, I'm going to mix some, some of this um, yellow, put some yellow out in here, a little bit of uh, raw sienna, a little bit of uh, red in there. And what I'm trying to do is match um, my flesh tone, okay? You can match your flesh tone with, with the uh, skin tone. So whatever you want to, whichever way you want to do that. And then again, um, uh, you can do the whole face in if you want with this uh, particular color. Okay, just put it in kind of soft. You can do the whole face, okay, something like that. Now, sometimes I leave a little bit of highlight, and uh, uh, if you were looking at a person, you might find out where there might be a little bit of a highlight on the face. But mostly on this side, it's going to be solid, more, more of a shadow side. Okay, now, a lot of times <clears throat> what I do... Well, I've got my, I'm going to get that out of the way, probably blocking. Um, what I'm going to do is um, soften up the flesh tone before it settles in. And see how, see how you can make that lighter to begin with? Okay. Yeah, see how that works? Now, <clears throat> you, can, you can do, um, <coughs> excuse me, different things with this. Um, let's say, for example... If you wanted to add just a pinch, maybe a pinch, I'm just putting a little pinch of blue into this. And especially for the shadow side, see how you can shadow down this side over here? 
around the eye. You can still let that original color come through. I'm going to clean this off. You, you're going to think that I got cut or something. Let's take that, <laughs> that red off my hand. Um, so you can come in, just a little pinch of uh, maybe some of that paint's gray in there or blue or whatever you want to use. And you can put that right in for the, on the shadow side. See how that works? Now that's it's a little bit on the dark side. And uh, shadow underneath the chin, not too dark because you don't want to make the person look like a beard. And while that's still, still wet, see, I come in and blot it a little bit, kind of lighten it up in places. See how you can kind of work that around. But what you want to do when you do uh, any pictures of uh, flesh and so forth, you don't want to ha have too many hard edges, you know, like uh, don't make it too, look like it's too jagged or rough. Everything is sort of a soft, smooth wash to start with. See how I blend it out? Nice and smooth on the face. Now, um, you can spend as much time as you want as far as working, um, mi mixing colors and so forth. But uh, a lot of times, if you're doing just a quick illustration, uh, you don't want to have to spend uh, too much time uh, with the uh, drawing or the painting. Sometimes what I do is I'll, I'll do a, a drawing and if you use a permanent marker, let's get to see how that's a hard edge. I, I want to take that out before. Now, um, if that looks too pale, let's come back. Where, where did we start? We started with some, let's use some of that uh, raw sienna. And I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, my red into that. Let's, I don't want to get it too, too, too. Uh, that's again I match my own flesh tone um, and now you can come back in and you can start building up more color see, around uh, around the face remember I said around the eye here you can make that a little bit more hollowed in there uh, on the ear maybe a little bit more color and, but what you don't want to do is show any brush marks. Everything has to be kind of smooth. And that's where my paper towel comes in because I can hit those edges, hit it, hit it before it settles in. That started to dry too much, so I, I've got to reactivate it with some water and soften that around here. Okay? Here we go. Now, um... That's that. Now, I've got a little bit of paint in the eye there, so you can always blot that out. Now, here's a little bit of a marking that I don't need there. This takes a lot of that fussy stuff you want to get out of there. See how you want those, those colors to be soft uh, on the flesh tone. Now, if you want to have a little bit more of uh, color on the cheek, See how you can put color in there? Again, ever so soft. Take the edges away. Uh, sometimes people have a little suntan. They may put some little more color on their ears. Sometimes people, when they blush, they, the ears turn red. I don't know if that, you've ever observed that one. But anyways, see how you can add more color? And then same way with this cheek over here, see it? Nice and soft. Hit it, hit it with the um, paper towel. That's how you do the flesh tones. Um, now, if you were actually looking at the uh, person, um, you know, a model or anything, you could start doing some other little things where, the, where you would notice the highlight hitting the face just right. And then then you could look at the person back down to the paper. What I'm doing this is just, just for memory. If it looks okay, um, it looks all right, um, nothing out of 
out of a place or exaggerated. That's why I like caricatures because you can add, exaggerate quite a bit the features, you know, whatever. I won't say, you know, what you might want to do, but you can exaggerate quite a bit. Now, uh, this shadow over here, just hit that with a little darker color right on this neck. Again, you don't want to get too, too dark because then it starts looking like a beard. There you go. Okay, now, um, depending on the, the color you want uh, for the eyes and lips and so forth, um, you, can, you can do that. See, this line here is a little bit hard. Let's, let's kind of round off the tip of the nose a little bit. There you go. You know how they apply makeup sometimes in Hollywood? You know, you see them on television. The same idea with the powder puff, you know, kind of work it in. Um, yeah. Okay, now, um, then when you want to do the hair, uh, usually I start off with a kind of a stronger base color. You know, just start the whole thing off with a, with a stronger base color. Now, if you see a little bit of highlight, uh, you know, leave some white, uh, white of the paper showing through to over here. Bring this around the back here. Just flare it out a little bit. You don't have to stay too, too fussy with the inside the lines. Just bring that back out around. Um, you can put earrings on, whatever, whatever you want to do. Again, it depends a lot on the, um, the person, the model. Okay, so let's do this side over here. Okay, fill this in. Again, this is the shadow side of the head. So the hair is going to appear to be darker over here. It's in the shadow. Come around down here. I have to look at this side, match this with this. See what we got here. Okay, I'm using a flat brush, but you can you can use just about any size. Other than uh, don't don't use too small a brush. Always uh, work with a big brush. You can always get fussier later on down the road with the uh, with the face. Now I got some kind of got some paint in the eye here. Maybe I'll have to make the lady <laughs> have black eyes or maybe green eyes or something. Let's see what we have. But uh, again, now this is up to you how, how much you want to do with a hairstyle. Um, sometimes you can kind of add a few more brush marks in here later on. You have to wait. Sometimes the markers don't work very well on the wet part. Do something like that. But the, the big thing is to, when you do the flesh tones soft, uh, if the person has a few wrinkles, if they're a little bit older, um, or if they're smiling, they have a little bit of a smile, they may have like a, a, maybe a slight indenture around here. So they, they might have a little bit around here if they're smiling, whatever, turn the lips up a little bit more and uh, whatnot. Now, um, when I do the eyes, I usually use a smaller brush for that. Now. Um, this is up to you how how much you, coloring you want to do. If you want to add a little bit more color, why don't we take some of this um, deeper brown sepia? I use that. Use a little bit more raw sienna in that, and you can just come back in. And if you if this you can use another brush if you want, and just kind of put some of that in. So kind of add some little bit more shadow in underneath the ear, bring that out. I'm going to, that's kind of too noticeable. I'm going to soften that up a bit here, yeah, bring that out. And um, use one of my paper towels here, quiet that down there. Take some of that out of there. But you can come around that way. Now. Um, uh, while I'm waiting for this to dry, what you can do, you can put some coloring in. You could put maybe a, 
what you might be wearing down here, maybe a, a, a sweater or something around the neck here. You can add color to it. I'm just put, making it blue. It can be any color you want, whatever the person might be wearing at the time. And go around the, the back here. Okay, and then uh, if you want, you could put a little bit of color in, into the background. Now, if you, you're outside a, a lot of times, the color could be very easily, could be a more of a, a greener color. Now, I don't want to make this too streaky, so I'm just going to wet this, give it a little wash first. But you can just put a little bit of a background color in that. You can erase a little bit if you get carried away with some of the brush strokes for the hair. The way the hairstyles are today, they're a little bit more you know, freer, you know, kind of, I don't know, like a flare, a little bit more flare to the hairstyle. There's a green in the background. And um, you can, uh, again, you can have this go up right to the top edge if you want. Go right to the tape. I usually tape around it, so I'll give you an idea how that works. So um, whatever you'd like to do with it. Okay, something like this. Whoops, take that. Whoa, erase that. You can soften that out a bit. But that just gives you an idea. Now, look what happened here. Uh, that's, a, that's where uh, it gets a little bit of a water stain. And so now we, I, we come back in and we have to do a little bit of lifting some of that color back out. See on this side? Okay. And uh, let's give her a little bit more rouge there on the, on the face. Let's put some of the color back in there. A little touch up here. Okay, I don't want that to be soft around there. There we go. Okay. Don't want to give her too much of a suntan here. Sunburn, whatever. Okay, you soften that out. Just kind of blend it out. The beauty of watercolor sometimes, if it does kind of get carried away, you can always touch it up a bit. Okay. There we go. So that's, that's coming along all right. Now, once this gets a little bit dry, if you want, you can put uh, a little bit co of color. Uh, I'm going to use a little bit of a smaller brush. Yeah, so I guess this is all right. Number 10. Nice point on it. So you can give her a little bit of uh, color, maybe on the lips. Just a little bit there. Okay, and then uh, uh, we have to decide what color we want the eyes to be. I mentioned green. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Some color in here. That doesn't look good, too good. I change it, <laughs> make it blue, blue eyes or brown eyes or whatever. So. Give a little bit of a uh, little bit more texture there. Okay, green eyes. How's that? Green background, green eyes. Now, uh, like I said, whatever you want to do with it, um, uh, you can change the hairstyle or whatever you want to do. But this is basically, basically. Um, how you would work, you know, if you're doing a um, a portrait. 
just uh, kind of abide by those same rules. Okay? So, there's a lot of other little shading you can do. Uh, I think probably by the time I would finish up, I'd probably add just a little bit more uh, ho a hollow color around in here, just around the, in the socket of the, uh, the eye in, the, in this area. Yeah, you can kind of put that in. Uh, this, this line here is too heavy. Uh, I can't erase it because I use a marker, but normally you could if you had a pencil. Use the pencil, okay? So that's basically uh, how um, you could do a, uh, a profile. Now, um, let me just go over this again. And um, if you want, you can use a, a, a man's head or whatever you want to use. We'll use this one again. We're going to use the uh, this. Now you can have the head turn, have them looking up, look, looking down, or whatever. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can move the head a little bit to the left or right. Uh, I, I usually don't put things kind of too much uh, centered. Let's put this one off to a little bit to the uh, left. And what I normally do is I go around this, um, if I use, a, um, use this uh, sort of a stencil, you can go around it. And uh, like I said, uh, let's put the eyes back in. Put them on halfway, halfway between the base of the chin. Yeah like that. If you need the center line, you can fold it this way and um, just put this pattern back up here. And that kind of gets, shows you where the center would be so that when you do the nose, now after a while you can automatically uh, judge this. You don't have to use this little little gimmicky thing I have here. Uh, here's the um, Somewhere where, where the base of the nose is, and the mouth is approximately somewhere in there. So you've got all of these things in, and all, all it is is a matter, I made it kind of, the mouth is a little bit crooked there, but um, we can take that out and straighten it up if you want. Clean that up a little bit more. Yeah, more or less that way. So again, the eyes in here, right? You're going to put the eye in somewhere like that. Uh, the nose, structure the nose. Sometimes I just make a circle for the nose, too. Make a circle and then put the little loops for the nostrils on either side of that. And just make some soft shadows in here. Eyebrows up in here, eyelashes. The eyes sort of, they almost fit into like an almond shape when you do them. So um, again, um, you can go over this a little bit, uh, like I did before. Get the mouth a little bit kind of even here. Eyes. Eyelashes. Try to match one side to the other. A little bit tricky. Not always perfect, but kind of something like that. You can kind of make sort of like more of a attractive face with it. Um, you know, a lot of times you, if you put in too many uh, edges, it makes it very difficult to. Uh, they start looking like too many wrinkles, you know. So what you do, you just kind of stylize everything, make it a little bit more glamorous looking, you know. And uh, the hairline can kind of have like a little more of a flow to it like this. See how you can kind of taper that around and change it. Look at this. <laughs> make sure the neck isn't too wide. There you go. Taper that neck out. Down in here, a little bit over there. See how I'm kind of glamorizing this thing. 
Of uh, course, you know, uh, I, I kind of get into a lot of fashion illustration. And the emphasis of, in fashion design, uh, you're trying to sell the garment, you know, the uh, clothes, the dress, or the sweater, or, or the gloves, or shoes, whatever it was. So you would you wouldn't give the uh, you wouldn't give the face and the hands or feet th that much attention the, uh, if you're trying to sell the garment. You're trying to sell a sweater. This emphasis goes on the sweater. So everything would change a little bit. See how I kind of glamorized the, <laughs> the, the appearance here. This one's a little bit on the, you can see, compare the difference of the drawing. A little bit too, not so attractive, <laughs> in my opinion. Okay, so <laughs> here you go, kind of a little fancy hairdo there. So there's a lot of, a lot of little tricks to the trade that you can kind of work out and, uh, and do. Now I set the, this a little bit to the uh, uh, one side, not centering it. So that means even the background can have maybe something that's in there. You know, I don't know what, what you could do with the background, but you can kind of fill that in with something uh, that w would be like m more like curtains or drapes or something in the background. And uh, as far as the color goes, I'd probably w uh, work this with the same colors, um, maybe uh, a little bit more spontaneous. Um, Again, you want to know where the lights are going to be coming from. I start off with a little bit of my yellow, a little bit of raw sienna. Uh, sometimes I use a little bit of orange uh, in there, or just a speck of red. And uh, let's lighten that up a bit. Okay. I don't know if it, you can add a little touch of green. Or, now, if you want, you can kind of, uh, what I do a lot of times is just wet this first. Give it a little bit of a wash so that when, when you do put the color on, you don't get hot edges right off. Then put, add more color into the face. Now, it seems like if you work more spontaneous, you're not, you don't tighten up as much. See, now I'm more, I'm more uh, working spontaneous. And uh, so um, maybe that helps. The hairstyle, you know, kind of give it a little bit of a flare, you know, over here. See, kind of the way you work it. And uh, what you don't want to do is get too uptight with uh, the painting. And a lot of times you do get uptight, you know, you start painting too, too, too fussy, or you use too small a brush for the uh, size of the area. Um, <clears throat> so that's how that works. Now that's going to be a, uh, a little bit freer drawing. You can compare the two. You wouldn't think the same person worked on it. See how I, I kind of left out uh, quite a bit. and. Uh, and more, um, more spontaneous, more spontaneous. And this is, this is the way you want to work a lot of time. If you, you know, just, just put the colors in and don't worry about it too much. See that? Just drop it in and wet into wet. And uh, uh, if it doesn't look right, you can just take it out or blot it out, you know, soften it up if you want. And then uh, you can decide if you want to, what color you want the eyes to be. You can put, hit, hit a, oops, need a little bit more paint than that. Just put a little bit of color in there. Yeah. Um, now, the more you paint, the more spontaneous you're going to get with all of this. And over a period of time, 
And uh, th I think that's what uh, watercolor a lot of times should be, uh, unless you're doing something that's really, really fussy, you know, and you're supposed to make it more almost photographic, then, then you can't paint as fluid as this is. See, you don't have to, you know, I just kind of hold the brush back and wiggle it around a little bit. And whatever strikes your fancy, you can add different shades of color in the background. Okay. And away we go. Now this one, I... You know, this I did this very quick, but to me, I like it better than that one that's a little bit fussier, and, and so it gets tighter. And in through here, see, you, if you put too many lines in, like showing the uh, ridge of the, the nose, and sometimes people put too many lines around the eyes, I, you're better off just to be more suggestive of that and just drop in, like if you want to show something hollow, you just drop in some shadow. Oop, no, <laughs> not, not a black eye, but you know, you get the idea of it, just drop some shadow in there around around through here. More suggestive. And then um, background, just a soft wash. I put some tape on this one, so I, I have to go a little bit more to the edge, to the corners around here, maybe a little bit, um, uh, quite a bit more contrast up in there. I kind of do corner to corner, you know, kind of interesting. Repeat the color. And let's say if I wanted to put a little bit more blue, I could drop some blue up in there, maybe a little bit more blue here, corner to corner again. There we go. See, that gives you an idea how that works. And again, like I said, you're better off just to be a little bit more fluid than to try to get too uptight with it. That's kind of doing its own thing. See how the blue runs into the green. Uh, here I may have to wiggle it around a little bit more. Uh, probably this looks funny here. Let's bring some color closer to her hair. Bring that down into there more. Yeah, that looks okay, better. Okay, something like that in the corners. Bring this over here. You can leave a little bit of highlight here, highlight, highlight, probably three or four places. Okay, add a little bit more color to the lips, possibly. Right in through here for the lips. Whoops. <laughs> uh, that's a little bit too bright. Let's see if I can blot that. You know how ladies kind of blot their lips? I guess they do. Sometimes they blot the lips. Yeah. Whatever. But anyhow, um, so this just gives you an idea. And uh, of course, I put the tape around this, so it gives you uh, uh, an idea of the, the soft mat or the false mat. Go around, take the tape off. And that kind of cleans up the edges a bit. There we are. Whoa. Uh, oh boy. Now if I spent more time maybe doing portraits, uh, I, I'd probably get a little bit more confidence in, in doing more of them. But uh, that, that gives you an idea. I always like to offset things so it's not just too much symmetrical. I try to make one side a little bit varied than the other. Okay, well that's pretty much it. 
I'm just going to, uh, I got a little bit of a spatter in there. I'm just going to try to erase that while I'm at it. You can kind of, sometimes you can lift it off there pretty good. I got it, yeah, a little bit of, uh, you can always do something, make some of like a uh, necklace or something. But that's more spontaneous anyways. And um, the more you do of these things, the, the better off they, they get. Um, so that was, that was good. Now, if there's too much, I, I see once in a while there's a little bit of an opening spot. You know, maybe you, maybe you want to close this in a little bit more here. I'll put it, see how you can fill that in a little bit more. Uh, sometimes your eye will close certain areas in. In fact, the word is called closure. Your eye automatically lines up with something else and kind of you, it closes in that, that area. Okay, so anyways. So that's about it for this week uh, and uh, doing uh, faces. But like I said, uh, you want to uh, kind of uh, get used to mixing the, your colors, uh, try to match your flesh tones and so forth. That might take a little bit of practice. Uh, this one I definitely like uh, uh, because I left a little bit even the, the white paper showing through. This gets a little bit too solid. So quite a difference there uh, between uh, you know one and the other. Almost looks like two different people did this thing. And uh, there's always something else you might see a, a little bit later that you can add, maybe a little line under here. I'll do it with a pencil. You know, maybe you could add something in there. But don't, don't try to make it too much of a, a solid outline. Um, uh, just kind of break it up a little bit more. If this looks a little bit too uh, solid through there, you can take your uh, marker or a pen or whatever you want to do. Yeah, you can just put some more lines in there for the hair. Okay, so I guess uh, I'm finishing up a little bit earlier today, but um, um, that does happen occasionally. Sometimes I finish up uh, a little bit over time, but uh, so. Uh, I don't know what other news I can say, only that uh, the museum, the Attleboro Arts Museum, is open now again, and um, they have to kind of keep it, you know, not too overly crowded, and we're all wearing masks and whatnot, but uh, they are open. I believe they're closed on maybe Sundays and Monday, but other than that, they're open, and uh, so good to, good to be with you and see what we can cook up for next time, okay? So I always say at the end of the show, brushes up, and we'll see you, see you the next time we come in, okay? Thank you.